Hey everybody, Ted here. Uh, just a quick video. Um, this is my $15 pickaroon. Um, I don't usually make tools unless it has something to do with cost effectiveness, and that is a reality of cost effectiveness. I do tree work for a living, and a lot of times it's just easier and cheaper for me to buy a tool. But uh, I found these $15 boys' axes at one of the local getting spots to quote a Canadian tool reviewer who's everybody's favorite including mine and I noticed that they had roll pins in the head of the axe and you'll see that right here it's a tiny little pin that goes through um, and that is an integral part of a good pick a rune. These are the ones I usually use. This is a PB and it has two rivets in it and I kind of designed it after this. This has a chisel bit head which is the kind I prefer. I don't like to point the spike. I like something that's flat on the bottom, flat on the top and uh, it seems to grab better and pull out better. Anyway, uh, I needed a couple of new pick to outfit my truck with irons. I always use boys axes as part as one half of the set of my irons and a picaroon is the other so when I saw these I figured I could just leave these on the axe and make a picaroon real quick that works really well and it'll fold up nicely with my boys axe in a tool wrap or however I want to do it because it's the exact same size and it turns out I was right now I don't usually make hand tools I don't like spending time refitting handles on axes and things like that I'll do it if I have particular favorites I have a council axe that I love that I'm gonna redo the handle on now any of my PV pickaroons I will rehandle these till the end of time I love them especially the 36 inches but you know these things the a regular pickaroon you're looking at 50 bucks 60 bucks I couldn't really justify going out and blowing 180 bucks on three hand tools so I decided to make one I wanted to keep it simple because if it's not simple it's cost it's not cost effective and sometimes when you go to make something you get lost a little bit and you end up spending way more money than you thought anyway I'm gonna lay this out and show you the cuts I made and I'll tell you how long it took and you're gonna be stunned because from start to finish it took 26 minutes for me to make this out of a two pound boys axe and I made as few cuts as possible and then I just ground it a little bit so it didn't have sharp edges and I'll probably paint it just because I like my axes and my stuff looking nice and it's sort of scratched up I'll probably paint it red because it's a truck tool all right here's the layout side and all I did on the layout side zoom in there a little bit for you and get my shadow out of the way how about that there you go I hope that's in focus I can't tell it just got really bright out but uh, all I did on my layout side was I took a good look at where the axe head entered and exited and um, drew a line about a half an inch away from it just to make sure that I didn't interrupt with heat any of the adhesives that they used in there and deteriorate how they had the head seated then all I did was lay on my PB picaroon matching the tops and traced it pretty close and uh, started cutting and I wanted to make as few cuts as possible because like I said if this didn't happen fast I'm spending a lot of time on it I'd be better off out in the brush working so to speak out in the field so I made as few cuts as possible and I ended up only making four cuts well cutting off four pieces so I'm gonna lay these back out for you and uh, it'll show you how easy this went There's okay there's that little tip I just dropped in which you're gonna probably lose in the shot but the first cut I made was up like this and across and I just took this out nice and square 
I took this top edge off by just going straight out as I could. There's even a little hump here, but it doesn't really matter. Then I took the angle down with this, and then I just took a little tiny sliver off the end because it was faster than grinding to get the end of the beak. Uh, I ground the edge of the axe. I ground this edge flat this way, which would be this this way. I ground like that flat so that I could get a nice chisel bit on there to match how the PV head is done a little bit because I, again I like how they grab and as it turns out it's a little shorter than what I usually use but this is meant again for not the my regular thing this is in behind the seat of my truck in the event I'm find myself without my regular PV 36 inches inch uh, p um, pickaroons and it's just it's a good tool to have around or maybe even I'll keep one on the splitter just for handling up on the deck and at 14 bucks, I used a half of a cutting wheel that I got from Harbor Freight. And then I used not even a third of a cutting wheel of a DeWalt uh, cutting wheel. And that puts my, the Harbor Freight one was under a dollar and the DeWalt one was under $2. So I had $3 in cutting wheels and then I just used a regular quarter inch thick grinding wheel to round off the edges and any burrs and to grind this little hollow in here and sharpen up my chisel and I was done and again it was you know it was under a half an hour to make it so my total material expenditure was under 30 bucks. Uh, excuse me it was at under 20 bucks excuse me so I'm pretty happy with it it's got a nice heavy head it's got the factory uh, set on the head and it's got a roll pin in it I think the only thing I may do is drill this out a little bit maybe to a quarter inch and put a big heavy quarter inch rivet in there or even just a uh, like a carriage bolt with a nylock on it because a bigger rounder bolt will less likely pull through the grain and uh, it doesn't matter how much meat you have here because the, the pressure on the head is up this way so anyway that's it that's my uh, $15 let's call it my $18 picaroon and uh, we'll just give you a little quick video of it slapping some wood so you can see how it goes all right, I'm probably cutting my head off, but uh, that's going to be the way it's going to go. I'm just going to compare these two. This is the 36-inch PV that I'm used to using. Uh, this is the 28-inch made out of the boys axe. Um, this is considerably heavier head and uh, shorter handle. Uh, it's going to take a little bit of getting used to. Um, what I found, and you're going to see, is that this right here, I found that that is really helps pry the head out very well. And so does the way it's curved in here instead of being curved all the way back. And we'll just uh, line them up so you can see. They're similar. They're not exactly the same. And, and uh, it's going to take a little bit of use to, to get used to the weight on the end. But uh, let's see how it operates. Barwood. That's a little bit of cheating. It went in a split edge. That's better. Grabs nice. Pries out nice. Uh, I'm tall, so it's a little bit awkward for me on the height. Side grain. Right in. Pries right out. Logs. Right in lifts it does pry out of that really nice um, I think that has a lot to do with the fact that this is tapered and it gets wider and there's that little shoulder there and then let's just take it for the side grain of a log we're going to be using this for the splitter and I gotta say I'm, I'm rather pleased now it's just gonna really be a matter of how long does the head hold up and like I said in the video, if I drill this out to put a little bit bigger uh, pin through there, I think it'll be just fine. So, 
that length will take a little bit of getting used to, but up on the deck I can see it. It is uh, considerably heavier. I might just cut down some of the shoulders a little bit, make weigh a little bit less. But uh, all in all, for a $14 axe and a couple dollars worth of cutting wheels, a grinding wheel, and a few dollars intact, you know, for under for 18 bucks under or under, it can't be beat. I'm pretty pleased with it. Thanks for watching.